Whether you like SpaceX or not, we can all agree on one thing. SpaceX has completely changed how rockets are launched. We all know how it used to be. In the old days, rockets were single-use machines. They launched their payloads into space and then fell back to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere or crashing into the ocean. Every mission required building a new rocket from scratch, and this process was incredibly expensive. Then SpaceX came along and flipped the entire system upside down. Instead of throwing rockets away after one flight, they made them reusable. That idea sounded insane at first. Even NASA couldn't achieve it with their traditional designs. And the thing is, we're not even talking about old rockets. Even many of the latest ones today are still single-use. NASA's newest and most expensive rocket, the Space Launch System, follows the exact same principle as rockets from the 1960s. The SLS core stage uses the same engines used on the Space Shuttle. Except unlike the Shuttle, which reused its engines, the SLS throws them away after every flight. Four of these engines, each worth around $100 million, are dumped into the ocean with every launch. A single SLS launch costs over $4 billion, and once it's done, the entire system is gone. It's like launching a 747 airplane and letting it crash after one flight. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been doing the exact opposite. For example, the Falcon 9 rocket's first stage separates from the second stage once it lifts off. Instead of being discarded, it performs a flip maneuver, reignites some of its engines, and begins a controlled descent back to Earth. During its return, the booster uses grid fins to steer itself through the atmosphere. Then, just before landing, it reignites for a final landing burn and extends its four carbon fiber landing legs, touching down gently either on a drone ship in the ocean or back at the launch site in Florida. This process happens automatically and with incredible accuracy. In most cases, the booster lands within a few meters of its target. What's even more impressive is that the same booster can then be refueled and launched again, sometimes within a matter of weeks. This was the first time in history that a company had achieved such a feat. Today, this approach has become SpaceX's routine. Their Falcon 9 boosters have flown dozens of times each, with some even reaching 20 successful flights, sometimes multiple rockets in a single week. But when it comes to crewed missions, unfortunately, the story looks a little different. The Crew Dragon capsule, which carries astronauts to the International Space Station, still uses the same basic principle that is almost identical to Apollo capsules from the 1970s. After completing its mission at space, the capsule performs a deorbit burn, firing small Draco thrusters to slow itself down just enough to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. This step is absolutely critical. Too little thrust and it stays stuck in orbit. Too much and it re-enters too steeply, burning up from the intense heat and pressure. As the capsule descends, it hits the upper layers of Earth's atmosphere at around 17,500 miles per hour. That's about 25 times the speed of sound. At this velocity, the friction between the capsule's surface and atmospheric particles creates temperatures that can exceed 1,900 degrees Celsius. To survive this, Crew Dragon relies on a heat shield that is designed to gradually burn away during re-entry, carrying heat off with it. While highly effective, this material can only be used once before it has to be replaced. But the danger isn't just heat. Re-entry is one of the most dangerous phases of any space mission. At those speeds, even a minor loss of attitude control can cause catastrophic failure. If the capsule's thrusters malfunction or the heat shield is damaged, there's no backup system to protect the crew. The capsule must hold the perfect orientation. Then comes the parachute sequence. After the fiery re-entry, when the capsule has slowed down enough, it deploys two drogue parachutes to stabilize itself, followed by four main parachutes to slow the final descent. These parachutes must deploy at exactly the right time. A delayed or tangled chute could cause the capsule to hit the ocean at lethal velocity. Parachute failures are among the biggest risks in human spaceflight. In 2008, a Soyuz capsule returning from the space station suffered a parachute separation malfunction, causing a violent ballistic re-entry and a hard landing that subjected the crew to over 8G of force. They survived, but only barely. 
This is exactly why SpaceX is developing a completely different approach for returning future spacecraft. Instead of letting the capsule fall back into the ocean under parachutes, they want to bring it home like a rocket. This is exactly why SpaceX wants to move away from the old parachute and splashdown system for its capsules. And instead, catch them mid-air, just like they already do with their Starship boosters. Here's the plan. After the capsule finishes its deorbit burn and begins descending through the atmosphere, it would use its Draco thrusters to maintain orientation, keeping the heat shield forward. Once it passes through the fiery re-entry phase and slows down to a manageable velocity, instead of deploying parachutes, it would activate a small set of braking thrusters to adjust its trajectory toward a designated landing zone, likely near the launch site. In the final seconds of descent, a ground-based tower with mechanical catching arms, similar to the Mechazilla system used for Starship, would grab the capsule out of the air as it slows to subsonic speed. But building something that advanced will take time and a lot of money. Look at Mechazilla. It took SpaceX over two years to design, build, and test before it caught a booster for the first time in 2024. The system cost around $1 billion to develop which is actually more expensive than some of the rockets it handles. The tower itself is about 150 meters tall, with two huge robotic arms, often called the chopsticks, that can move precisely enough to catch a 70-meter booster traveling at hundreds of kilometers per hour. During testing, Musk even said that SpaceX could afford to lose a rocket during practice runs, but they couldn't risk damaging the tower because it's too valuable and complex to rebuild. The booster can be replaced, the tower can't. Developing a similar system for capsules will be just as challenging. But if there's one thing we've learned about Musk, it's that when he says he's going to do something, he usually makes it happen. This new catching method will be far safer and faster than the current way SpaceX recovers its Crew Dragon capsules. Right now, even when everything goes right, the parachute and splashdown system is still risky. Crew Dragon slows down with parachutes and then hits the ocean at around 15 miles per hour. That may not sound like much, but for a heavy spacecraft carrying astronauts, it's like a small car crash on water. We have to understand that Crew Dragon is currently the only capsule the U.S. has for sending astronauts to the International Space Station. If something ever went wrong with it, NASA would have no backup. They'd have to rely on Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, and let's be honest, U.S.-Russia cooperation in space isn't exactly at its best these days. So far, SpaceX has completed 13 crewed missions since 2020, all successful, carrying both NASA astronauts and private crews. And with new space stations being developed to replace the space station later this decade, there will be many more flights ahead. That's exactly why SpaceX wants a safer and faster recovery system. Because as the number of missions grows, reliability will matter more than ever. Yeah. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.